Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Supremely Enlightened One, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Let us remember with great respect our teacher, most venerable Kribat Guru Jnananda Tero, Pingat Lokusami Ngasa, Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu. Meritorious devotees, we are all so very lucky. We are so very fortunate. But the sad thing is sometimes we do not realize this. Why do I say that we are fortunate? There is a reason. It is because we were born as humans, yourself and me. We were not born in the hell worlds. We were not born in the ghost realm, nor in the titans world. We were not born in the animal world. But we were lucky. We were lucky to escape from all those bad destinations. And here we are, as humans. We were born as humans. Not only that, not only we were born as humans, we were also very fortunate to come across the Buddha's dispensation, the great teachings of a supremely enlightened one the perfectly self-enlightened Buddha, Sama Sambuddha, our teacher. Because in our sansaric journey, devotees, we have different births, and more often than not, we are born in for bad destinations. Now and then, we might really be born as a human or a deva. Still, we do not come across the Buddha's dispensation. That's so very, very scarce, very rare. So when we are born as a human to this world, we are born with the defilements, greed, anger, delusion, and all other secondary defilements that stem from these defilements. So we have the problem within ourselves. But we do not come across the answer. If there is no Buddha's dispensation, then there is no talk of eradicating these defilements. There is no talk of the Noble Eightfold Path. It's all about enjoying sense pleasures. That's all. But when we are born as a human, once in this life, we have got the answer to these questions, the problems of our life, the defilements. Now we have the answer, the teachings of the Buddha that help us to cleanse our mind of these defilements. It is very rarely that we come across these answers because only the Buddhas have the answer how to purify the mind. Because ultimately only the Buddhas saw us the true nature of this world. It is the Buddhas that teach us of the Four Noble Truths. There is such thing as suffering. And there is a cause of this suffering. There is a cessation of this suffering. And there is the path leading to the cessation of suffering. All these are taught by the Buddhas. Buddha said, imagine a world 
without the sun and the moon what's there total darkness would you say that is how a world without the buddha it's in total darkness all the beings they are lost in ignorance the dense darkness of ignorance they can't see the truth it is when the sun and the moon arise in this world that the light spreads then there is the discerning of the daytime night time the months the years the seasons if there is no sun no moon there is no talk of these things likewise it is with the arising of a buddha that the light of the dhamma spread to the whole world dispelling the darkness of ignorance because the buddhas they teach us the first noble truth the suffering the second noble to the cause of suffering the third noble to the cessation of suffering and the fourth the path leading to the cessation of suffering only a samma sambuddha a perfectly self enlightened one teaches this he expand upon this in various ways and means all through the sutta pitaka the canonical discourse this is what we find the expanse how buddha taught of this four noble truths in an expansive manner he expanded upon it so that we can understand this four noble truths that is the focus of a buddha to make us realize to make known the four noble truths to the world that is why a buddha arises in this world even in the time of the buddha when lay, lay people approached him some question them some asked the buddha buddha we are lay people we are living in a household life so tell us some dhamma that we can incorporate to this household life where we live while enjoying the sense pleasures as lay life so they were focused on the mundane aspect of this life but certain instances we are come across we come across instances where wise people lay people have approached the buddha and questioned the buddha on the higher teachings because they it seems there are instances like the one we are going to discuss today this is the badraka sutta it's in the connected discourses in this instance this village headman his name is badraka gamini badraka gamini was a wise person he had understood why a buddha arises in this world he had learned that it is to teach the four noble truths so he wanted to understand the four noble truths so when he approached the buddha he paid respect to the buddha and sat by the side and asked the buddha a very wise question but the gamini asked the buddha blessed one please tell me i want to know what is the origin of suffering and what is the cessation of suffering the origin of suffering the cessation of suffering i want to know please teach me said badda gamini buddha said okay gamini if i were to tell you of the arising and arising of suffering and cessation of suffering with regard to the past then you will cast doubts about it you would be skeptical thinking it is a thing of the past and you would disregard it if i were to tell you of the arising and cessation of suffering with regard to the future then again you would disregard you would cast doubt and uncertainty as to the truth of it thinking it is of thing of a future therefore badrak gamini i will tell you so that you can realize the origin the arising of suffering and the cessation of suffering here and now while you are seated just like you are now and buddha asks a very simple question if a person comes to us and asks this please venerable teach me the arising of suffering and cessation of suffering you would say okay you have to learn the profound teachings the deeper teachings of the buddha like the five aggregates of clinging the patit sampada dependent origination 
the six sense faculties. We might teach on these. But see, meritorious devotees, the Buddha, he knows. He knows each person's abilities, skills. How they have, over the time in the sansaric journey, fostered wholesome qualities within them. Buddha can see these ingrained qualities, the inner nature of a person, and then he teach accordingly. So Buddha asked him a simple question. Because he was a village headman, he asked, Okay, Badra Gami, tell me, in your village are there certain people that something bad were to happen to them? Say, they are fine, they are put in jail, or some of them die. If something bad happened to a certain group of people in your village, are there such people that would, that would cause you suffering, that would make you sad? Then Badda Gami replied, yes, blessed one, there are some people when something bad happened to those people in my village, I feel sad. I feel sorry and I lament with them. I weep with them. I feel for them. Then Buddha asked, okay, Gami, then tell me, in the same village are there certain people when something bad happened to them? Some mishap, some trouble. Say someone dies, or they are executed, fined, jailed. Are there certain instances when something bad happened to a certain group of people that you feel indifferent, you don't feel sad, you don't feel sorry for them? Then Gavin said, yes, there are a certain group of people also that I don't feel that way towards. The Buddha said, that's something. Why so? Why in the same village for certain group of people you feel sad when something bad happened to them and to the other group you feel indifferent. So Badda Gamini said, Buddha, the people toward which I feel sadness, I have a love, a desire, an attachment to that people, that group of people. Therefore I feel suffering. I feel sad. To the other group, Buddha, I have no attachment no love or desire for them. Therefore, when something happens to them, I don't feel sad, said Bhattar Kamini. So he was wise. He was wise to understand what caused him the suffering, the lustful desire. Bhattar Kamini said, it is the lustful desire that caused me the suffering. Buddha said, Bhattar Kamini, indeed, Indeed, that it corrects. That it correct. That is what you have to understand, Badragamini. The lustful desire, Chandarag. The desire is the cause of suffering. So see how true this it is. This is desire is the cause of suffering. And then Buddha said, Okay, Badragamini, this is what you have to realize. Now infer the same thing to the past, apply the same thing to the past, the same theory, the same Dhamma, and infer it to the future as well. How do you infer? Think. Think of your past. Now you can do it yourself. Think of the past for yourself. In your case, meritorious devotees, think of your life. In the past, if you have suffered in any given moment, then what is the reason? When inferred with this Dhamma knowledge, it is attachment, it is desire that has caused suffering. So if it is so in the past, now you have that experience. So you can think in retrospect of your life, the past life, and apply this Dhamma. And you will see, if ever you shed tears in your past, in this life, it is because of desire. Craving. That's what caused you to suffer. If so, what about the future? Would the future be different? No, my friends. No. It won't be different. It's the same. In the future also. That's why Buddha say infer it to the future as well. In the future also, the origin of suffering would be desire. So, Gamini here and now, it's the same. When there is attachment, there arises suffering. When there is desire, there arises suffering. When there is no desire, with the eradication of desire, there is cessation of suffering. That's what is there to realize.
for us and it's likewise for the Badr Kamini. The same. It will always be the same. Okay. So do you remember the instance where Visaka, there was a nice incident in the time of the Buddha, one day in the middle of the day, Visaka came to the Buddha. So her hair was wet. The clothing was drenched in water. All, she was damp, all of her body. Worship the Buddha. And Buddha asked Visaka, why in the middle of the day, Visaka, why you are in, we are all wet and in a hurry? What's your case? Then Visaka said, Buddha, I am coming. I, I just lost my uh, daughter. I just lost my granddaughter. And I just uh, finished the funeral. It's just half I had to do. I am com coming from the funeral. So she had lost her granddaughter and it was customary in the time of the Buddha in India to wet their hair so people know, okay, as a custom, that's a thing. Someone, someone has died in that family. It was the custom. So then uh, Buddha knew that Visaka was sad at the moment. So Buddha said, do you love your granddaughter a lot? Visaka said, yes, yes, I loved her a lot and I miss her. Then Buddha asked Visaka, okay, Visaka, would you like for all the people in Savat to be your granddaughters and grandsons? Visaka said, oh, Buddha, what? That would, be, that would be lovely. I would love to be, all of them to be my granddaughters and grandsons. Then Buddha questions Visaka, Visaka, how many people are there in Savati? Visaka said, there are many. This, Savati is very big and there are many people living in Savati. Then Buddha said, okay, Visaka, how many people die in Savati per day? Then Visaka said, every day, at least one person dies. Sometimes, some days it's ten, some days eight, five. Definitely someone dies, blessed one. Every day someone dies in Savati. Then Buddha simply said, Visaka, then every day you will have to have it to hair. Every day your clothes will be damp. Then mindfulness arose in Visaka. Wisdom arose with mindfulness. Because she was a stream mentor, the Sotapanna disciple, instantaneously wisdom arises. So what all Buddha did was to arouse mindfulness within her. And he said, I don't want any single granddaughter, grandson. And Buddha went on to say, Visaka, in this world, if there are a hundred things that we desire, then there are a hundred things that is going to cause us suffering. If there are 90 things in this world that we desire, then there are 90 things that are going to cause us suffering. Likewise, Buddha said, if there are five things in this world, then there are five things that is going to cause you suffering. If there are two things in this world that you desire, that you love, then there are two things that is going to cause you suffering. If there is only one thing in this world that you desire, you love, then there is only one thing that is going to cause you suffering. If there is none in this world you desire for, then there is nothing to cause you suffering. How profound are these words of the Buddha? So in this life, you always try to be happy. It's a struggle. The life is a struggle. What is the struggle? Is the nature of the be beings, the human beings, once they are born, Buddha says, Sukha Kamani Bhutani. They seek happiness, comfort. That is the nature of us all. Dukkha Patikula. And we have word of suffering. We hate to suffer. We hate suffering. So all we do throughout the life is to hoard things, to collect things that make us happy. The things we love and desire, we take them closer to us. We want to collect them. We want to acquire them. And the things that we cause us suffering, we try to ward them off. Try to distance from those things. Isn't that what we do? Why do we do so? Because we want to be happy. That's what we do. The what is all life, that's what we do. We try to acquire things that make us happy and word of things that make us suffer. 
But still we see that people are not happy. More often, not they, or more often than not, we suffer. Why? There's a reason. Everything that brings us happiness, the nature of these things, they are impermanent. They are subject to change. And they are non-self. We cannot exercise control over them. So the very things that we collect and acquire, things that we desire and we want to keep with us, the things that we find appealing, are the things that make us suffer. Why there is attachment. There is lustful desire towards them. And that Buddha said here is the cause of suffering. That is what we have to understand. If we want to be happy. Once Buddha said, the stairs, the things we eat and drink, what is the end product? Urine and excrement. Likewise, all the things that we find appealing and desirable, the end result is they are going to cause some sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and suffering. That is the nature. So then Buddha went, to, went on to say to Badrakagami, so Badrakagami, this is what you have to realize. All the suffering in this world, they have chanda mulaka. They are rooted in desire. All the suffering in this world is rooted in desire. All the suffering in this world is based on desire, chanda nidana. All the suffering in this world Chandohi Mulang Dukkas has desire as its origin. Originates from desire. But the Kagamini, this is what you have to think. If you contemplate in this way, meritorious devotees, it's wise consideration. It will help you develop wisdom gradually. So this is what your focus should be, to learn the Dhamma and think accordingly. That is wise consideration. So in this way, we have to apply the Dhamma to the, day to the daily life. Then gradually our wisdom grows. Then Buddha asks Badraka Gamini, Badraka Gamini, what about your wife? Uh, no, before that he asked about uh, Chiravasi, the son. Badraka Gamini himself actually tells about the son. Oh Buddha, now I understand that desire causes suffering. I have my son, his name is Chiravasi. I have him boarded in a place away from home. And every day in the morning, I sent away a messenger to find uh, how he is doing, just to know about him. And I wait for an answer, wait for the messenger to come back and tell me that my son is okay, he's doing well. And when the messenger is late in coming, I worry. I worry if something as bad has happened to my son. I feel agitated. Now, Buddha, I understand that worry, the sadness, the agitated, the reason for this state of mind is my attachment, my desire for my son. Now I understand that, said Badra Gagamini. So he's a wise person. So Buddha encouraged him, okay, Badra Gagamini, this is what you have to realize, that desire is the cause of suffering. Then Buddha went, went on to ask him about the wife of Chiravas, his wife, that is Chiravasi's mother, and asked him, Chiravas, Badraka Gamini, what about your wife? Do you love him? Love her? He said, yes, I love my wife. Badraka Gamini, isn't it uh, before, isn't it that once you saw her, before you saw your wife, did you love her or desire her? Before you saw her or heard her, did you love her? The mother came and said, no, it is only after I heard or I saw that lady that I fell in love with her. So it is with this desire that love, attachment arise. Then Buddha said, something bad happened to a wife. Then he said, I can't bear that. I would not be able to bear that. So Buddha said, this attachment to your wife that arose after you saw her, after you heard of her. So it is this attachment that caused your suffering. But the time, this is what you have to realize. 
So there is an incident actually how uh, this happened to our teacher, Lukasami Ngansi. A young girl along with her friend once came to meet our teacher and uh, the girl, she was crying. And when asked why, she said, I was supposed, I was to marry a certain army personnel. He was to be my future husband, but in the battle, uh, he died. This is in Sri Lanka when we had the war. She had died in battle. He had died in battle and now she was crying over his, her loss. Having to part with her future husband. This had ha happened like six months ago and still she is crying. For six months, she would be crying. And he said, I can't let go of my attachment. Then our teacher had said like in this, before you had seen and heard of this young man, were you in love with him? She had said, no. Had you known that he would die in three years, the affair is three years, that would you have fallen in love with him? Would you have started an affair? She had said, no. Now understand, it is because this attachment that you are suffering now. And in this way, our teacher tried to arouse mindfulness in her, but she couldn't. Why? Because she had not practice that way of thinking. That is why we have to, here and now, meritorious devotees, practice this way of thought. Practice by the Dhamma. Because when, when the time comes, when we really have to face this situation, then we will not be ready if not. If we practice, then we will be ready. So again and again, our teacher tried to arouse mindfulness, saying, look, he's dead. He is nowhere to be seen in this world. Even if you were to dug his grave, there is only the soil. Because the body decays over time. So what is the point in crying over this dead person? Do you understand it is futile? She said, yes, I do. But again, she says, I can't live without. I want him with me. Again, again, again and again, she says this. So anyway, she was beyond help depressing and she may have lost her mind also. So that is why we have to here and now practice the Dhamma and uh, have the mental strength to face these situations with the wisdom of the Buddha's teachings. Because in the time of the Buddha, there was an incident of, there was a certain lay disciple, female disciple by the name Bandula Mallika. One day she was offering dana to Venerable Arahant Sariputta and the retinue of monks in a household. And suddenly a messenger came when the dana was going on. A messenger came to the arms of land, gave her a message. She looked at it, kept it aside and went on offering arms as if nothing happened. Then a servant dropped a certain dish and it scattered all the, uh, on the ground, it broke into pieces. And Verbal Sari put thinking that her mindfulness would waver and she would become unhappy to protect a state of mind and to focus her to in the present state of dana, said, that is the nature, Pingatupasika, that's the nature of things that are subject to breaking. Little things break, that happens. Said Venerable Araham Sariputta. Then Bandula Malika, the lay female, female disciple, saw the message she had just got said to Venerable Arhan Sariputta. What was the message? Said, here, see it, Venerable Arhan Sariputta. See the message I got just now. My beloved husband and 32 sons had just been murdered by an enemy of our family. But still, I am able to, I am able to bear that because I have realized that everything is impermanent. Because she had attained fruits of the path. So I am okay, she said. Now see that strength, where did that come? From the realization. What is the realization? That cause, that desire can be the cause of suffering. Once you understand the impermanent nature, that you can't control anything, the non-self, that you, have, you can't exercise control over the things you love, or anything in this world for that matter, then you understand. That is the reality. And you come to term with this, terms with this reality. You embrace this reality. 
because that is the nature of the world. That's the law. So then you don't suffer. But nowadays, for that is not the case. People, I remember in one of our monasteries, the same thing happened. Upasika, she had offered us the dana, offered the monks the dana. Then she got the message, a call from home that her husband had committed suicide. Sadly, that very moment, and she, she toppled over and she was crying, wailing in front of the monks. And we had to chant parit and because she couldn't bear it. Why? Still, she has not realized the truth of life. It is one thing to listen to the Dhamma. You can talk of it, you can talk the talk, but actually walk the walk, it's a different thing. If you don't contemplate with wisdom these teachings, it doesn't become a part of your life. So that is why Nowadays, people find it difficult to embrace this truth. So listening is one thing, but you have to put it to practice. So in nowadays, we come across very young people who, because they don't understand, uh, ones who go to the universities in particular, because they don't understand this truth, because they have not heard the Dhamma maybe, they suffer a lot because they create attachments, they begin affairs in their university life. And we just got a, recently got a letter from a certain uh, student wrote, had wrote to a monastery and she said she had a friend and this friend uh, came to the university, a girl, her friend, she was a girl, she came to the university from a faraway village and she had had an affair with a boy in the village. But once she, mo she moved to the university, she wanted to aim for a higher place, like wanted new life. And she befriended another boyfriend, leaving the first boyfriend from the village back and forgetting him. Once the girl returned to the village, that boy was distraught because now she was going away, leaving him for another boy. He couldn't bear it. He said, don't do this. I love you so much. I have not from my eyes looked desirous of another woman than you. Because there are certain such boys that so in love with their girls. I have not with my eyes looked at another girl desirous of her. It is only you that I want. But she didn't care. She thought he was a fool. He tried to drive him away. What this boy did was he took some acid chemical. And he put it in on his, eye, his eyes. He blinded himself with that's it. Himself, he did this. Because he didn't want to see any other girl if he can't have the girl he wants to see from his eyes. Blinded himself. Some may say, this is true love. Is it? No, this is ignorance. It is not seeing the reality of life. This eyesight is... A, Result of what? A meritorious deed we have done in the past. If you throw it away, throw it away overwhelmed with lust, that's what happened to him. He was overwhelmed with lust and more so he was overwhelmed with ignorance. He will be blind for many sansaric journeys, many lives in the sansara because he threw away his merits, overwhelmed by the defilements. Why? Why do people suffer in this way? Because of desire. The lustful desire is the cause of suffering. That's what we have to understand, meritorious devotees. It's the truth. And there is also, uh, this actually was both said by the Buddha. There were some young monks. And he said, monks, uh, he said there was this incident, monks imagine there is a, uh, he said of an incident, there was a young boy who was very in love with a girl. And all the boy could think was, of was the girl. But one day this boy sees the girl going with another boy. And the boy is upset. Because now he's going to leave her. He has no control over her. So the boy goes to the girl and says, Look, don't do this. I love you. Don't leave me. But she didn't care. So Buddha said, Now how, what does he feel? Monks, what do you think of this? Why do you feel suffering? 
the monk said that he suffers because the attachment to the young girl. So this young man take okay thought okay now I am, I am suffering before this girl. It is because of my desire for her that I suffer. I have to let go of this desire because she is not listening to me anymore. And he let go of that desire, that attachment, the love for that girl. And the next day again he sees the same girl going with another boy. And Buddha asks, now how does he feel? The monk says, now he doesn't feel that suffering. He feels indifferent. Why? asked the Buddha. With the blessed one, because he gave up the desire, the attachment. So likewise, that is the nature of life. Desire causes suffering. That is something meritorious devotees we have to understand. That is the truth of life. So normally in our life, we fail to see this truth. Because always we get attached to things. How attached are we to our body? This very body, it is, we are attached to this all the time. We always try to keep it healthy. We try, we try to beautify the body. Both females and males, we do this. And unknowingly, we are attached to this body. And when this body becomes impermanent, we cannot let go. And that change of the body makes us unhappy. Because as we see, naturally, we age over time. If we don't realize, that is when I, I, I get hurt. Our ear, nose, tongue, body get hurt that we suffer. We feel sad. Why? Because it's the attachment. Think of losing your eyesight, your hearing. Maybe a limb. Can you bear that? We can't. Why? Because of the attachment. A person can say, brag, okay, I can, I am, I can get rid of the, I, don't, I am not attached to anything. I am ready to let go of everything. These are just words. When push comes to show and really you have to let go, it's very difficult. It's not easy. You have to practice. Only if you practice, then you have a chance. And there's a very nice simile by the Buddha. Buddha once said, there is a blind person. Both his eyes, eyes are blind. So this blind person wanted to wear a beautiful clothes. New, fresh, beautiful clothes he wanted to wear. So he told some people who he thought to be friends. Okay, I would like to uh, don a very nice uh, shirt and trousers maybe. So these people, what they did was, they gave him very ugly, disheveled, rag robes, rag clothes, old clothes. That was very ugly. But he wore them thinking they were nice. They were immaculate. He, that's what he thought. He trusted them. And because he was blind, he couldn't see the reality. And he would go from place to place and talk highly of his look, how beautiful I look. Look, of my, look at my garments. How good I look. He would show off them. He didn't know they were ugly. And he would show off to the other people. And the onlookers, they thought, he's a fool, madman, this told him. But a kind and compassionate person, a healer, a doctor, saw this person and he cured his eyes. Now he could see for himself. He had eyesight. And what do you think the first thing in this world he looked at? He looked at his clothes, what he was wearing only to realize that he had been fooled. Now, would he wear them even for a moment? No. He threw them away, said the Buddha. This is a Buddha simile. Likewise, monks, if you realize the true nature of this eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind, the six senses, you would not be attached to them. You would get rid of your desire. You would abandon your desire for these six senses. The Arahants did that. They abandoned the desire. And they, this is very nice when the Arahants, they uh, discuss, having realized this truth. In the Kottita Sutta, we have come, come across the instance where Arahant Sariputta and Arahant Kottita, they discuss. And Arahant Kottita asks the uh, Venerable Arahant Sariputta, Venerable uh, friend, Tell me, 
is the eye attached to the form so the or else are the forms attached to the eye is the ear attached to sounds or is the sounds attached to the ear is the nose attached to the smells or the smells attached to nose nose is the tongue attached to the taste so is are the taste attached to the tongue is the body attached to the tangibles or are the tangibles attached to the body is the mind attached to the thoughts or is it the vice versa that was the question they will never arahant sariputta say no arahant mahakoti say no that is not so the eye is not attached to the form no are the forms attached to the eye the ear is not attached to the sounds no are the sound attached to yes like question the six senses he said and then said it is like this you have to understand imagine there is a bull white bull and a black bull and you tie them together with a rope and when an arahant mahakoti if a person go to say arah sariputta if a person go to say the white bull is tethered or tied to the black bull and the black bull is tethered tied to the white bull is it right is it correct to say so no and when arahant sariputta said it is wrong the correct reply would be is, it is the rope that ties them together the rope is the bondage likewise when buddha arahant sariputta said the eye is not attached to the form no is the form attached to the eye Be- because of the eye and the form if there arise a bondage an attachment that is if there is desire arises there that is the bondage because of the eye and the form if there if there arises desire that is the bondage that is what causes suffering and when the arahant sariputta said if in case the eye was attached to the forms and the forms were attached to the eye then there is no hope we cannot escape from suffering by practicing the noble eightfold path it is because the eye is not attached to the forms and the forms are not attached to the eye that we can practice the noble eightfold path and free from ourselves from the suffering because the internal and external senses are not attached to each other but because of the desire arises because of the external and external senses that is the bondage and by realizing the impermanent nature the suffer in the non self of these things then we can realize the truth of life that's what the arahants did they realize there is an instance where uh, an arahant upasena he lived in the same monastery with venerable sarahant sariputta and he was when he was residing in his kuti uh, in a cave actually he was bit by a snake and he knew he was going to pass away attain parinibbana any moment so he summoned all the monks and they also so we were arahan sariputta and he asked the monks before my body going is going to disintegrate keep it aside and he talked of his body as if it is something that is not his and venerable well, arahan sariputta hearing his words said arahan upasena it's very odd that you say so as if you are going to die any moment but we don't see any change in your complexion in your features there is no, it doesn't seem like we agitated or scared or upset then arahan upasena said venerable well, arahan sariputta if i were to consider this i ear nose tongue body and mind as mine me mind myself then i would get upset my features would disable and i would look uh, uh, drawn out but that is not so i don't consider these six senses to be me mine or myself then when the arahant sariputta said how true it is how true because you venerable arahant upasena we know for a long time you have given up this notion of me mine and myself it is quite acceptable and we know that you will not get upset in this way when faced with death so that is the nature of the arahant so realized this dhamma and they gave up their desire 
for the six senses and everything's conditioned in this world. So that's what we also have to try to practice and it all begins contemplating on this truth. That the things we love and desire, one day we have to let go of them. This attachment is transient. We can't ho hold on to these things indefinitely. Because all of us, every moment that passes by, we get closer to death. That's the nature. Have you heard of the great king, uh, Alexander, the great conqueror? You know, he conquered many kingdoms. From Greek, he was a Greek ruler in Greek. From Greek to India, he conquered many uh, kingdoms. And along the way, when he uh, came close to India, he met an Arahant. And uh, he was fortunate to listen to the Dhamma, and uh, this is what the Arahant asked him. And he said, okay, I have conquered four uh, venerable, I have conquered four great kingdoms, and it is my uh, goal to conquer more. Then Arahant asked him, okay, you say you have conquered four kingdoms now, for the moment. Now when you get thirsty, what do you do? You, do you go bring water from all these four kingdoms or you take whatever water you find here and now? He said, I drink what I have now. When you get hungry, do you go searching for food from all the whole kingdoms or you eat what you find in one plate or do you eat from four plates? He said, I eat from one plate. When you want to sleep, are you going to sleep in one bed or are you going to sleep in four beds in the four kingdoms? Darhan asked. He said, no, I will be sleeping in one bed. In this way, he realized with the words, the Dhamma taught by the Arhan, the futility of his goal of acquiring as many kingdoms, conquering as many kingdoms he, he could in his life. And he returned to his kingdom, to Greek. And uh, he wanted to spread the Dhamma. But sadly, he suddenly fell ill. And he, at the moment, in his deathbed, he wanted to do, draft his last will. And he summoned a person and said, this is how I want you to uh, act once I have died. I want you to uh, make special coughing where there would be two holes and you want, I want you to lay my body in the coffin and through the two holes you have to put my hands out of the two holes. So this is a peculiar thing to have in a last year. So the person who is drafting the last year, he asked, why great king you want to do this? I say, then he said, I want these people to know the great king Alexander, the great conqueror, he left this life without anything, without taking anything with him. He had four great kingdoms. He conquered many kingdoms. He had a lot of wealth. I warned these people that I didn't take anything away, anything tangible. How profound, how wise are these words. That's all, that's the same for us. No matter what property, the wealth we acquire, we don't take any of these things when we die. It is on the good deeds, the meritorious deeds, the wholesome things that you have fostered that you take with you. That's all, Mentoris Deodes. That's all. Then the great king Alexander, he said, and I want my, my coffin to be carried by the finest, finest doctors, four doctors from the four great, from the, king, from, from, the, from the four kingdoms, the finest doctors to carry my coffin so that people know that when death came upon me, even the finest doctors couldn't make me better. Because in the end, he died suddenly from a certain illness. No one could cure him. He had the finest doctors. And I want people to know that no one can overcome death. Death is imminent. I want people to know. That's why I'm drafting this will in this way. And I want you to, from, this, from my castle to the place I am buried, I want to, the road should be covered with gold sourings, silver, gems, and all the valuable things you can find so that people know that when my coffin was taken to the grave, my body was not in touch with any of the valuables I had acquired in life because we leave them all behind. He wanted to give this message to the world. 
because he had wisdom gained through the words of the arahant the teachings of the buddha so because meritorious devotees we are also fortunate now to listen to this dhamma the teachings of the buddha like the badak sut and the things we discuss so practice think accordingly contemplate in this manner so that you can also eradicate the desire love and the root and root out the cause of suffering and realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 okay now we shall share the merits we have acquired to this to the to gift in the dhamma to many throughout the world so the sponsors for this uh, dhamma program is linda japit and dusino teng from canada they are the ones sponsoring for this dhamma sermon so the merits as buddha said the gift of dhamma excels all the gifts so these meritorious devotees through gifting the dhamma they have acquired huge merits today so all the merits we have acquired in this manner we shall first share the merit with all the brahmas god sak along with the thavatins and chatu maharaj ke devas and all other devas of the world may all devas and brahmas increase in heavenly lifespan beauty happiness power and may they be fortunate to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and may these merits also be shared with the departed relatives of linda jabit and jusino teng that is departed father fathering father in law mother mother in law johan jabit tiam jing teng amoy lai may this merits be shared with all of them and also may this merit be shared with all they are long lost relatives of debit uh, linda jabit and dusino teng all long lost relatives and loved ones in this life and also throughout the sansaric journey and may their after lives be comforting and free of suffering and may they be free from samsara as soon as possible sadhu 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 and may all these merits today we have acquired may they be shared with our teacher most venerable kribat kuranyanananda mahathero loku swaminanse and all venerable monks of mahamina buddhist monastery the anagarika nangs the ordination aspirants and may they all realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and the sponsors linda japit and jusino teng would like to share this merit with their mother swarthi their children cynthia and kevin elder brothers family sutrisno wife on alex chris and theodore and the younger brothers family mardianto maimi timothy aro and calling so may all these merits shared with all of these all of them and may they also experience happiness and well-being in this life and also may they have a rebirth in the heavenly worlds and also realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 also may all these merits be shared with our teachers our parents friends relatives loved ones and may they all be well and happy and may they have the good fortune to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and also may these merits be for all of us joining today worldwide and may we all have the good fortune to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 may you all be well and happy namo buddhaya 
मेवनी वाड़ी ना दरमदेशुना नर्मी मटे श्रद्धा YouTube चैनले सब्सक्राइब करे सीन हो लगुनो उबान्ना